Hey everyone, welcome to your next tutorial. We carry on this week with object-oriented programming. Uh, so as you can see, we're just going to build on last week's tutorial uh, where we had our table of cats and our table of dogs and both these um, were served or handled by classes which both inherit from the pet class. So let's just have a look at the code so here we had a our base class called pet it had an age a name and a breed here we have our dog view model class it had an extra unique member called is guiding dog and the members age name and breed were passed through to the base class and finally we had our cat model which had uniquely number of lives the age name and breed were again passed through to the base class and the number of lives was handled by the derived class cat view model okay so what we're going to do this week is inherited methods so as you can see currently these classes only have data members and properties and they don't have any methods yet um, so we're going to build methods into these classes, but specifically uh, look at inherited methods. So using the power of inheritance for functions or methods. Okay, so to do that, uh, we can think a little bit about the base class pet. So we could imagine that all pets have certain behaviors that a person could define in the base class. So, for example, let me just stop this. So, for example, you could have a behavior. We're just going to make it public string uh, and call it get info. And the purpose of this function would be to return uh, the information of a particular pet. So, that would be to return um, these properties. Okay, so we could go return uh, name is a read or let's call, say name the breed is age dot two string. Let's just add a plus there. years old okay and when we call this function regardless of what pet it is it will return this fixed string okay so yeah we could then in our uh, dog view model or in our um, when we're accessing the dog view model or when we're accessing the cat view model access the method uh, get info from the base class okay so let's quickly do that so we're just gonna add a column we call the column info and we obviously have to add a cell for every record and then you simply call the get info and the reason you can call the get info is because this behavior is inherited from the pet class Okay, if we if we do that uh, for the cat, so here we get the cat view model. We add a column for info, and we also add a cell under that column for every record, and we then call cat dot get info. When we run this, we can look at cats, which says then pixie the persian is five years old mew the main is two years old Voldecat the bengal is three years old that's directly from that function and um, from that method all of these pieces of information the name the breed and the age is actually pulled from the base class we go to the dog table and we have the same thing Woof, the german shepherd is three years old again name breed 
and age comes from the base class okay so that's cool uh, because as you can see we then didn't have to go into our specific view models and change any code here we didn't have to go and define a get info here and we didn't have to go and define a get info here all right but what if we actually wanted to incorporate unique attributes such as is guiding dog for the dog class and number of lives for the cat class what if we want to wanted to incorporate these attributes into the get info function so we wanted that return value to also say something about this so um, the way you would do that is to go to the base class and say use the virtual keyword by doing so we telling our derived classes that listen you are welcome to override the functionality uh, that I have defined for this method so you are more than welcome to go and do your own thing for the get info uh, method okay so remember the virtual keyword says you don't have to but you are more than welcome to go and override uh, this method so let's go and do that so then we just go public and in order to override it we use the override keyword it's a string and we call it get info <clears throat> and immediately when you hit tab there it just implements um, it just returns by default the base.get info but then you can go and alter this uh, and add some information to it so for example we could say based on the fact that the dog is a is guiding dog so we could I'm just going to use a unary uh, conditional statement so this is basically an if so we say if is guiding dog then return uh, base.get info plus the value um, is also a guiding dog and then else we return has no extra skills okay so as you can see this method is now unique to the dog model uh, we couldn't have said anything about the is guiding dog uh, in the base class because the base class doesn't know anything about dogs it just knows about pets in general okay if we go to the cat view model we can we can do the same thing so uh, we can again go public override uh, string no, string get info and here we've got our method and we can make this unique to the cat model now so we could let's say for this we just want to add the string uh, number of lives left equals nine minus number of lives okay so here you can see it's the same method get info but with different implementations okay so uh, we just go ahead and save that um, and now when we run it we'll see what the output is of the individual types of animals okay so for cat we've got pixie the persian is five years old and here you can see number of lives left because it was 9 minus 9 so this cat is basically dead uh, then we've got Mew the main is 2 years old and we've got this added piece of text which specifically comes from a cat view model for dog you can see we have a different output we can say Woof the German Shepherd is 3 years old which comes from the base class and then is also a guiding dog which is implementation or, or code comes through the code that was written in the 
derived class. Now, the last thing I want to show you is for a case where, so let's say in the base class, we know that all pets uh, have a particular reaction to walking. Okay. But we don't know anything about that behavior. We in the base class know that it exists, but we don't know how to implement it. Okay. So we want to force derived classes to provide an implementation for a particular behavior. So by using the abstract keyword saying public abstract string walk and we put a semicolon there um, this would force derived classes to to implement the walk method okay here we see a red squiggly line which says pet.walk is abstract but is contained in a non-abstract class pet so you cannot define abstract methods in non-abstract classes so you need to go and add the abstract keyword to the to the pet class now what a abstract class means is that no instances of the base class can be created so you can't go and instantiate pet um, you need to access pet through derived classes okay so there we go with pet now if we go to the dog view model there's a red squiggly line on the on the class so remember dog view model inherits from pet and this one is saying dog view model does not implement inherited abstract member pet.walk so it's saying listen here the base class that you're inheriting from is forcing you to implement functionality for the walk method and you haven't done so so it's not gonna um they, we have a problem so let's go and do that so the way you implement or provide an implementation for an abstract uh, method is exactly the same as you did for the virtual method you override and just that was the walk okay and yeah i'm just going to keep it simple return a basic string this is the dog and all dogs love walking so i love it let do this okay and when we go to cat it has the same problem it needs to be implementing the walk method so we go public uh, override string walk and here we return uh, no human Alright, so here we have a method that overrides a virtual method, so it wasn't necessary, but it was useful for the derived class to override the base class's method, and in this, in the case of walk, it was enforced by the base class that the derived class had to provide an implementation. Okay, so let's just go back to our views. And here we just go and add another column just to show the functionality for the column walk. Uh, copy this and call the walk method. And we do the same for cat. Here we go. Let's run this. And there we see. So here we've got our cats list. We've got Pixie the Persian is five years old, number of lives left zero. That's from the overridden virtual method. And there we have walk, uh, which is no human will force me to walk, which is a specific implementation that the cat view model implemented for the abstract method walk. Okay, and with dog, we've got the same thing. And here we have, I love it. Let's do this okay uh, you might struggle to see the usefulness of these abstract and virtual methods uh, right now 
uh, where you can apply them uh, but next week we're doing polymorphism and then the benefit of having this ability to provide different implementations for the same behavior becomes a lot clearer um, but for now that's it thank you see you next time